Hello and welcome once again. Today I'm going to show you how I made this really famous uh, hedgehog with red shoes on. And I got a really good feedback on all the Facebook groups. Thank you very much for liking and encouraging me. And it's really appreciated. So I sketched him out first. And this is the sketch, the side pose and the front pose. And I'm going to try and achieve something really close to the sketch. I've taken corridor slivers as always. <clears throat> and I've rolled it into a barrel shape. I'm sorry for the delay in this uh, tutorial because I had a really bad throat. And uh, I've always got complaints about my voice. So I've got a mic now. I hope it gets better now. And I'm making the body of a hedgehog. So just rolled out and making it firm. And it gets uh, really quicker with the multi tool. So I got this from Heidi Feathers. And I've got a th size 36, I think. The basic needles in it. 36 or 38 and so when the body is nice and firm I'm going to roll another piece and make the head so when you get good comments on your work you really get encouraged to do more and I was really pleased with all the feedback I got on Facebook pages thank you everyone if you're watching <laughs> So I'm gradually building it up, adding more wool. And it's going to be a round shape and then we're going to make the features on that. So basically we just need a ball to sit on top of the body. And as I'm self-taught, I watch a lot of felting videos. And when you're watching felting videos, you just have the urge to do some more so it's always good to watch other people work because you always get to learn something new because everybody does it in their own way but every video tells you something and you learn a lot so now I'm attaching the head to the body and I'm going all around with my needle until it's nice and secure on the body as the body and the head seem to be quite the same size I'm adding more wool to the body part so it's nice and plump because I want to make a little plumper, not a really thin hedgehog. So I'm adding more wool and making him fat and rounded so he looks cuter. I've taken a little shred of wool and I'm going to make the nose and the muzzle. Just rolled a really small piece. And it's going to come off the face. So it's going to protrude from the face, the nose part. And I'm going to shape it once I've placed it on the face. So it's easier. To know how big we want so here the eyes are gonna be and you can make a big fat nose if you want just to make it look cuter so he looks like a duck right now but it's all right so 
as you can see have felted down the sockets for the eyes and the nose that's going to be the little muzzle so I'm adding more wool to give it some cheeks and this is going to make him look more like a little duckling so if you want to make a little duckling <laughs> this is the way to go <laughs> but the nose is going to be a bit more pointy or you can see the shape of the duckling anyways we're making a hedgehog right now so let's stick to that I'm just finishing off the cheeks and making them neat, nice and firm. Adding some more wool on top of the nose part. So now you can see the eyes will go in and the nose will pop out. By adding a little piece of wool, it makes a lot of difference. And a little bit just below the nose. So this is going to be the mouth. Now I'm going to make arms. And similarly I've taken some core wool and rolled it into an elongated shape and I'm stabbing it down to make it firm so we don't need much details it's just going to be small arms okay after the arms I'm making the legs and I've taken some wire for that I fold it over the the sharp end and then i've just measured how much i need them to be because i'm going to build shoes on top so just folding it you don't get the pointy end sticking out and i'm going to make the shoes with polymer clay so with this bend these are going to be the feet so i've just folded it over and approximately the same sized legs because these are going to go into the body I'm using pliers just to press them so I don't want it completely inside I'm using red polymer clay and I'm going to shape the shoes I did once one of them before I recorded it because as I told you earlier I'm self toss so everything is the first time I'm like I have made things with polymer clay but this is the first time I'm trying out shoes for my felted creations so I'm trying to match with the one I've made before I want them nice and round and you can give them any shape you want you can make wellies if you want to and I want them to be matching each other so using my tools i'm shaping the shoes onto the wire that i had cut for the legs and you can add as many details as you want I'm keeping them simple because these are the first ones I'm doing. Using some tools to get the shape right. And the size should be the same, of course. So 
so one seemed a bit fatter needed to be fit fatter no adding lines to him, to them just a little bit of details and you can add as many details as you want and you can change the color it's all up to you giving it the little curve on the inner sides now I'm adding eyes and I've used an owl too to make the holes for the glass eyes glass or plastic minor glass and I painted them with black because it didn't like the color so I'm just adding some glue and fixing them in now I'm going to give the nose some color and I've taken dark brown for it just placed the wool onto the nose and then I'm shaping it I think it's easier this way And I'm going to go around and make it nice and neat. Once I'm happy with the nose, I'm gonna move further and add some color around the eyes first. So I've gone right, right next to the glass eyes. I'm just stabbing it down. So it's right around the eyes. I'm using cardboard wool for this light brown color. I'm cutting off the extra bits. Of wool. Now I'm going to use an even lighter color for the nose. And the rest of the face. So I started up the nose. And I'm going to stub it down. I'm using the eggshell merino top. It's an eggshell color. And I'm going around forehead with it I'm going to form the eyelids as well so here I'm mixing some eggshell with the brown so I get a nice color I'm just hand mixing them this eggshell is too light and I want it to be a nice lighter brown. I'm using the same mixed color to cover the rest of the face. 
in the mouth so you have to go around the contours of the face and the cheeks and I'm going to cover the whole thing the whole face You have to keep stabbing until you are happy with the neatness. So I'm using a single needle on this. I'm going around. And as you can see, it looks cute already. So I really enjoyed making them. Now I'm making little eyelids. It's a little piece of wool to go around the eyes and stab it so it forms a little eyelid. Just a tiny bit. This thread just goes around to form a little line. Now I'm felting down a little tiny piece of the same wool and this is going to form the proper eyelid that's going to push the plastic's eye in so it doesn't look like it's stuck on the face. And this can give all the expressions and the character you need for your felted creation. I'm going to make the same kind of eyelid for the other eye and felt it down and give it shape with the needle so the both are similar. Shaping the cheeks and the lower part of the mouth. I'm putting some dark brown wool just to form the line of the mouth. Cutting off the extra bit. And now with some lighter color for the tummy area. I'm using the same color for the lower lids and it's just a thin line around the eyes on the lower part. So these are going to form the lower lids and you'll see that all these little details, they make a lot of difference. So I'm happy with the eyes. I'm going around the nose with the light brown, same color. 
so it get, gives a little bit more shape to the nose and the muzzle so it comes down and around the nose a bit more volume to the mouth and the nose so it's all about shaping now I'm going to make little tiny ears and I'm using the same carded wool and just making two little circles big enough for the head I'm going to stab them down in place and first I do them really lightly so if I have to remove them I can And once I'm happy, then I go around with my needle once again. So it looks like a really nice teddy bear at the moment. And not looking like a duck anymore. For the arms, uh, the hand part I'm doing, uh, covering with the light colored wool. So the, these are going to be the hands. As I said earlier, I'm not going to add many details. Because the, the hair part is going to take a lot of time. I'm going to cover the rest of the arms with a dark brown color. And this is also carded wool. I get all my wool from World of Wool. So I'm just covering it up, going all around, making it nice and neat. I'm going to make the second arm the same way. Now I'm going to place the arms and felt them down nice and secure and I'm going to cut off the extra bit so now they're nice and secure to the body I have to go all around the arms and really stab them down here I have got some pieces of yarn and I'm using dark brown color and fawn color and the fawn color is which I'm going to use randomly just to give it a shade and so these are going to be the spikes so I'm putting them and just folding from the middle on both the sides so they stand up as you can see in the sketch I have to make a line where the spikes end so I don't go all over the face so I'm making that with a marker using a watercolor marker you can use anything you have because it's gonna get covered anyways and one by one I have to add the spikes out this is going to take time but you can see the end result is worth it so take your time enjoy the process and just randomly put in a light colored one and just make up your mind that this is going to take some time but it's fun and uh, once you start doing it you get the hang of it you enjoy it and after loads of are done i'm just going to show you that i'm going to unravel each one of them with my fingers and this is going to take even more time but the lovely curls that he has is going to look amazing. So you have to do each one very patiently. And now I've added the wool to the rest of the body as well. And this is the end part, the rear part of it. 
some unraveling or unwinding each segment of the yarn and you can leave some in the middle but the more you do them the nicer it looks so it was a thin yarn so the curls were really tight it looks really nice now I'm adding some dark wool where I have not put the spikes in and this is the very bottom of the figure and the sides as well so it gives a nice finish this the back and the head are completely covered so for this scarf I'm using a merino top and I'm going to felt it down loosely and then I'm going to see how it goes around neck so I've just taken a strip which I think will go around the neck the length I'm just felting it with my multi-tool it's going to be flat then I'm going to wrap it around neck and see how it goes so you can use any color you want now just wrapping it around its neck I'll see how it looks in all that spikes that I've added I have to really search for the neck <laughs> where I have to put the scarf in and now I'm going to go around for the final time not just seeing how it looks on one side or do I want both the ends to come on either side? So here it goes. I think it looks better this way. So I'm going to felt it down. Just tap the edges. Make it nice and neat. And the ends, I'm folding them under. So they have a nice edge. folded them in and felting them down for the crossbody bag or the satchel I've taken the uh, felt sheet and I've got a strip long enough that I can go around the body and for the bag i was just thinking how bad how big i need it to be and how it's going to fold over so you can make any shape or size you want and uh, it's the second time i'm doing it I made one on the mouse but i wanted it to be more detailed so i'm just thinking how the strip it's gonna be how big I want it to be shall I fold it this way or shall I just fold it over I'm just trying out my options and I think it goes well this way so I'm just gonna give it a little bit curve and I'm stitching the both the sides so there's an opening in the middle then I'm just stitching up the sides with the thread and needle I just add the black color at hand so start using that going across to the other side stitching that so it closes both the sides and 
you have a little pocket and I've cut off the extra thread knot goes inside giving it a little bit of curve that's going to be the flap now I'm using some yellow wool I know light green wool just on top just to give it color and so it hides the weird looking stitches you can make designs on it as well but as you can see I've spent a lot of time on the spike so I don't want to spend some more <laughs> So you have to felt it down carefully so it doesn't close the bag. So it still opens and this is going to be the little button. It comes on top. So it's just secured it in place. And as you can see you can still put your finger in. Just making it neat. Now the strap goes around under the arm and I have to stick the straps in. So I'm going to use some glue to do that. Now I'm going to make holes using my owl tool for the wire. Uh, with the shoes on and I've baked them so they're they're nice and hard now so I don't want it to go all the way up because I have to make legs with wool so uh, they should be coming out a bit so you should be able to see some wire because I'm going to wrap some wool around it now these shoes when they're baked they become a bit heavy so they keep rotating on you but it's all right because you have to make them nice and firm with the wool so this is how it is going to stand now i'm going to put some glue on the ends of it I'm just putting glue on the very top and that's going to go right in and i want some of the wire to be sticking out because you can't have the shoes right sticking to the body so we have to make the legs so it's just a bit of glue and I'm using all-purpose glue and they will keep rotating until I've got them nice and firm with some wool so I'm wrapping some wool around it it's the color I used for the tummy part in the light brown and I'm going around the wire felting it down so this part you have to do it really nice and firm so the whole weight of the body can go onto the shoes and he can stand properly and the uh, the shoes don't keep rotating so once the glue is in uh, it still keeps rotating so you have to go around wrap them nice and tight and then with your needle you have to go just all around it and you have to keep checking if it stands because they have to be really nice and firm and you have to make the balance like push it inwards from the tummy so the whole weight is balanced and it is able to stand so this is going to take some time and but he is going to stand the end
So the shoes have to be nice and flat from underneath. Putting some glue right into the shoes as well. Just to make them more secure. So now you can see he's standing. Or you can give him a platform if you want. A wooden slice would be nice. Thank you very much for watching and do subscribe for more cute tutorials.